All right, let's recap what we said about the four levels of protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, not quart, quaternary. Uh, primary, that's quick and easy. The correct amino acid sequence. Each amino, uh, each protein has a certain number of amino acids. It might be something like 137. And each one of those 137 is a certain particular amino acid. In other words, the one in position 25 is a certain particular amino acid. How many different amino acids are there, again, in proteins? 20. So those 20 are arranged in some certain very precise order, and the correct amino acid sequence is the primary structure. Uh, we also mentioned in the previous video, video that's genetically determined. In other words, determined by your DNA, by your genes. And that can get messed up by something called a mutation. And so genetic diseases, what genetic diseases do is mess up that sequence. And we'll talk about some of those as we uh, continue on through the course. But then we come to the secondary structure. What is the secondary? I am only going to uh, uh, concentrate on the coiling and sort of represent it like that. The coiling of the amino acid chain, each of these we can understand of the amino acid chain. And what is that produced by? <clears throat> well, coiling is regular. It's regular. <clears throat> and it must pr be produced by something that's the same with every amino acid. What's the same with every amino acid? Well, every amino acid has got, got, what does this represent there? A carboxyl group. What does that represent on the other end? An amino group. So there's an interaction between the carboxyl groups and the uh, amino groups across the chain. And so uh, <clears throat> it's produced by interactions between carboxyl, between carboxyl and amino groups. Alright, and so across the chain they hook on to each other and produce this regular uh, pattern of uh, secondary uh, structure. Um, and what does that provide for the amino acid chain? It provides strength. It makes the amino acid chain stronger. Protein's got a tough job to do. And so this secondary structure um, uh, gives greater strength to the amino acid chain. Tertiary. Uh, we have some picture in your book. It looks like kind of a hodgepodge. And uh, this is a three-dimensional, three-dimensional folding. A three-dimensional folding um, of the uh, amino acid chain. This is what gives that magic word. I'll write it right down here first. It provides what's critical to the functioning of proteins. Shape. shape. Say, if this one provides shape, what does quaternary provide? A more complicated shape. But what produces what produces this tertiary tertiary structure? Well, it's got to be something. It's not a regular pattern. It's kind of in and out and up and down. It is a certain exact shape. It's got to go. Every protein has got to go together a certain exact way to get a certain exact shape to do its job. But it is produced by a number of things, but we'll just co concentrate on one. Produced by something that's different from one amino acid to the next. And what is different from one amino acid to the next? It's uh, what is represented by this little hydrogen here. It's what? The R group. So some R groups attract each other. Some are repulsed. Some are hydrophilic. Some are hydrophobic. That and some other things. Uh, go together all together to produce this uh, tertiary uh, structure, this three-dimensional folding. So all I'm going to do is put interactions among R groups. Interactions, interactions <coughs> among R groups. All right, and that provides that magic word, shape, shape. Quaternary structure provides more complex shape. Before we go to that. Let's just highlight the fact that all, all proteins have the first three. 
all proteins have the first three, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Only the most complex proteins have the fourth. And there's a simple reason for that. It's having this quaternary structure that makes them the most complex proteins. Yeah, so what is quaternary structure? Quaternary structure is nicely illustrated in the book. That is, uh, shows two or more polypeptide chains joined together. Two or more polypeptide chains joined together. And so, um, and that provides much more, uh, much higher levels of complexity in what? In shape to the protein. And so, four levels of structure and uh, your, uh, your uh, study guide asks for an example. One example of a protein with, with quaternary structure. And the example I'm going to give you is one that should be near and dear to you. It's uh, traveling around in you, uh, specifically in your red blood cells. It picks up oxygen uh, from your lungs, drops it off at the cells uh, out in the tissues that need that oxygen. Uh, what is the name of that very, very complex protein molecule? It starts with H. Hmm. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. And uh, hemoglobin. Uh, besides being a very complex protein, is one that is uh, affected by a mutation. At least some people inherit a mutation. It's a very common thing. And that affects their hemoglobin. And we'll talk about that a little bit later um, because it affects the primary structure of hemoglobin, which affects all the rest. And uh, so we'll talk about that later when we get to mutations. All right, that's it for this one.